In this lesson, we are going to be factorizing trinomials that look like this. Just give me a second, let me write this out. So, is there a common factor? Yes, there is. So you would take out a common factor of 2. And then, because, because the number 2 can fit into all of those, so you'd be left with 2x squared, take away 3x, take away 5. So even after we factorized, we still have a number that is left over in the front. That's what I say here when I say we're going to be factorizing trinomials that have a lead coefficient, okay, even after we have done a common factor. Okay, so that's what we're going to be exploring. So here's our next example, well, our first example. Um, so what we can see here is that this is actually not a trinomial right now uh, because all of these have x's in them. Can you see that? So what we're going to do is we can take out a common factor of x, but there's more that we could do. We could also take out, um, we could take out a number. Now you might be thinking, okay, we can take out a two. Now that's fine, let's do that, and I'll show you that we could actually take out more. So that's gonna be 38 plus 60. But now if you look at these two number, these three numbers, you could take out a two from each of those. So now that becomes a four on the outside. So then you're left with three x squared, take away 19 x plus 30. There we go. Now we can't take out any um, number from those. So sometimes people get like they don't know what the biggest they don't know what the biggest number they can take out is. So what I just told them to do is just take out a two, and then if you can take out more after that, then you just keep adding to it. That's all. But if you want to take out a four from the very beginning, maybe you saw that, then that's fine as well. Okay, so here we have our trinomial. Now, remember in the previous lesson, I showed you how to factorize a trinomial when this number in the front is not a 1. So remember, this is where we use this technique where you draw a line and a line like that. Um, I'm just making this side much longer because this side's going to have more factors than this side. So we're going to go 1 times 3, 3 times 1. So remember, I've already taught this, hey, how to factorize when the number in the front has a coefficient that is not 1. So if you're not comfortable with that, then you should go watch that video right now and then come back to this just to see what it'll make more sense because I'm going to go a little bit faster now. So now we're going to do all the factors of 30. So 1 times 30, 30 times 1. 2 times 15, 15 times 2. 3 times 10, 10 times 3. 5 times 6, 6 times 3. I think that's all. Okay, so now we need to try and make the number negative 19. So, for example, ah, here we go. If you take 3 times 3, okay, that would give you 9. Then if you choose the opposites, which is this one and this one over here, that would be 10 times 1, which is 10. Now, a 9 and a 10 can make minus 19. How would you do that? You would say minus 10 minus 9 because that gives you negative 19. So you just keep this 4x on the outside, don't ignore it, just leave it there though. Now I'm gonna put the top numbers in the first bracket, whoops, just say three for now, uh, top numbers in the first bracket, and then bottom numbers in the second bracket, like that. Then if I had to multiply those two together, I'd have to get a three. So remember, we're not looking at these numbers up here anymore. So I'd have to get a three, I mean three x squared, so I'd just put x and x. Now. We're trying to make minus 19. So if I had to multiply these two together, that would give me 9. But we want the 9 to be a negative, so I put a little negative over there. Then if you had to multiply these two numbers, so let's just quickly give more space here, that would give you 10. But we also wanted the 10 to be negative, so I'm going to put a little negative over there. And then we are done. That is how it would work. Okay, so that's your final answer. So you would just leave the 4x like that, and then you will just put those two brackets. Next example. Okay, so for this one, ah, oh, this one looks pretty cool. So here you have an R4, here you have an R3, and here you have an R2. So you could take out the lowest one, which is R2. The number 3 would go into all of these. So I'm going to take out a 3 as well. Now what would you have left? Well, that would be 5R2 minus R minus 6 just like that. The way that I know it's correct is if I had to multiply these back, that would be 15r4, that would be negative 3r3, and that would be negative 18r squared. So everything looks good. I quickly do another little check though, just to make sure there's no other common factors, but it looks okay. So now you see that the number in the front 
is not a one. So we have to use this new technique of factorizing that I've been showing you. So we'll say one times five and five times one. Then one times six, six times one, three times two, or you could say two times three, doesn't really matter. You're gonna do both anyways, but two times three, three times two. Okay, so we're trying to make the number, uh, don't look here now, hey, we're not looking at that. We're looking here, so that's a negative one. So you're trying to make a negative one. So the only way would be if you say five times one, because that's five, and then you choose the opposites, which would be six times one, which is six. Now, if you take a five and a six, how would you make the number minus one? Well, you would say five, take away six. Okay, so what we do now is we open up the two brackets and we are gonna say um, the top numbers are gonna go in the first bracket, so that's five and six. The bottom numbers in the second bracket, like that. Then um, we're trying to make five R squared. So I'd have to put um, an R over there and over there then we need to make minus one R. So if you had to multiply those two together, that would give you a five R. And we want the five to be positive, so I'll put a plus over there. Then, okay, let's actually leave that there. Then if you multiply these two together, that would give you six R, but we want that to be negative, okay? So what I'll do is I'll put a little negative over there. And there we have it, that is our final answer. Here's another example. So step one is to realize that this one has an A3, this one has an A2, and this one has an A. So we can take out, we can definitely take out an A. Now what is the biggest number that can go into all of these? You might say two, but there's, there's more. We could actually take out a six in all of those numbers. Then what we do is we just see what's left. So this would be five A squared. Then this would be, uh, 9a, and then this would be negative 2. Okay, and so there we have it. We can't take anything else out, so that's good. So now we can start the process of 1 times 2. Sorry, let's do the 5s first. 1 times 5, 5 times 1. 1 times 2, 2 times 1. Okay, so now we're trying to make the number 9. So that's an easy one. 5 times 2. That's 10. And then the opposites of that is these two numbers over here. So that's one times one, which is one. And so how would you make positive nine? Well, you could say 10 take away one. 10 take away one, which is nine. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, open up the brackets. And so that's gonna be um, the top numbers go in the first bracket. So we can say five and one. The bottom numbers go in the second bracket, one and two. And then if you had to multiply these two together, you wanna to get five A squared. So we'll put an A there and an A there. Okay, now, if you had to multiply these two together, that would be 10. Do we want 10? Yes, we want 10. Okay, so that can be a positive over there. Then if we had to multiply, let's make this a little bit like that. Okay, 10 A. If you had to multiply these two together, that would be a one. But we wanted that one to be a negative. So we make it a negative by putting a negative like that. And so there would be our final answer. Let me just erase this so you can see it nicely. That would be the final answer over there.